Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together today, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You, O oh man, are without excuse, every one of you who passes judgment. For by the standard by which you judge another, you condemn yourself, since you, the judge, do the very same things. We know that the judgment of God on those who do such things is true. Do you suppose then you who judge those who engage in such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you hold his priceless kindness, forbearance, and patience in low esteem, unaware that the kindness of God would lead you to repentance? By your stubbornness and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself for the day of wrath and revelation of the just judgment of God, who will repay everyone according to his works, eternal life to those who seek glory, honor, and immortality through perseverance in good works, but wrath and fury to those who selfishly disobey the truth and obey wickedness. Yes, affliction and distress will come upon everyone who does evil, Jew first, and then Greek. But there will be glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good. Jew first, and then Greek. There is no partiality with God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Only in God is my soul at rest. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed at all. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Only in God be at rest my soul. For from him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Trust in him at all times, O oh my people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. Lord, give back to everyone according to his works. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
my sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love of for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this, you were insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you, scholars of the law. You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul, took, if St. Paul yesterday took aim at, again, the world at large, calling them to task, today he focuses in on, the, on the, his very audience who he's addressing, which is Jewish converts to the faith. And he basically looks at them and says, you all think, you know, you got some kind of extra bonus points here for the fact that you have all of these things, that you're part of the covenant, that again, you go, God has supplied something to you, but you're not living it. As a matter of fact, you know, you need to be, like, you know, wake up and realize that all the things that you're like looking at everybody else with like, you know, this little eye of judgment, it comes right back on you too because you're doing the same things. You just think because of the fact that you have again this wonderful gift of the truth of the faith that you know you can kind of get away with a little more. Folks, we're not supposed to live in presumption. And our Lord is calling, them out, calling out the Pharisees, the scribes, and the scholars of the law, all in the midst of everything we hear in the scriptures today, because of the fact that they're forgetting the same thing. And that's where St. Paul is again calling everybody to task as well. As Catholics, as those who have the fullness of revealed truth from the Son of Man himself, who dies and rises again for our sake, we are held to a higher bar. You didn't know that, did you? You're held to a higher standard because you have the fullness of truth at your disposal. And because of that, we have to hold up our end of the bargain. We cannot live in what's called presumption. And presumption basically states like, well, you know, ah, God's just going to let me get away with things because of the fact, hey, I'm part of his crew, right? No. Quite the opposite. He looks at us and says, I've called you to more. Because he's called us to the highest standard. And that is the standard of love. That is the standard of an authentic, powerful, self-giving love. That he displays to all of us on that cross. And that pouring out of oneself that he demonstrates for us. He looks at each and every one of us and says... I've called you to know less. So lest we delude ourselves and all of a sudden say, I've earned something or I got something here where it's like I can take care of it. Oh, God's just going to kind of, you know, you know, wipe it all clean. Well, yeah, he will via the gift of the sacrament of reconciliation if we humble ourselves. But we're not designed to stay there. We're designed for union with God. He's made us for himself, as St. Augustine says, and our hearts will be restless until they rest in him. Are we not then allowing ourselves to then to be taken up into this beautiful gift of his love, to be able to make it manifest in a world that is in desperate need of encountering it? Because make no mistake about it, folks, as we walk around the world right now, for many of us it's not really on our radar screen, but... For everybody my generation and below right now, it is getting extremely difficult. 
And what do I mean by that? People are getting bombarded by various things of information. And not much of it right now is leading towards the fullness of life and love that is Jesus Christ. Things are getting more difficult because of the fact that this love that we're made for is being so obscured in the world. We are made for this, and people can't see it. And to the degree that we're not living it, we become obstacles for others in the world who need to know it. We have to stop. We have to stop pretending like, you know, all of these other people that are, again, around us in our lives that maybe are Catholic but really aren't coming to church or really not engaging their faith, that it's somebody else's problem. You have the opportunity, friends, to get to people I can't get to for a variety of reasons. Because they'll look at the caller and they'll run the other way. That's just what it is. But you have the power to engage them. You have the power to still have a conversation with them. You have the power to do great and wonderful things by the power of the Lord at work within you. But if we don't take up that charge, that charge of what love demands, of what Christ has given us, so we're called to give others, well then nothing changes. And a matter of fact, the world keeps going the other direction. And I gotta tell you, looking at the lay of the land, I don't know how much longer it can t continue on this path before something breaks in a real way. And we end up in some real trouble. Because it's getting pretty close right now. So it comes down to, again, looking at our own hearts. And where are we in our relationship with God? Is he truly living at the top of our lives, being what he is designed to be, our Lord and Savior? Or have we put other things in his path? other things of the world that are not filling us up very much. I'm not asking you all to be monks. Lord knows that that would be inappropriate. What I am asking you to, as St. Francis de Sales says, to pray according to your state in life. Depending on what you have for time and the ability, give it to him. Engage our Lord. Because out of that time, God will fill you up. And out of that fullness that comes from him, most especially in the gift of the altar that we're going to take in in just a few minutes' time, you have the ability to do more than you can possibly imagine to bring that gift of love and grace to those you encounter. And that's how the world changed. That's how it changes for the better. And guess what? It, that's how it happened once upon a time back in the beginning of all of this when the apostles and the disciples that followed all spread it around the Mediterranean. And that's indeed how it will happen again in our own world. Confident in our Lord and Savior, we bring our prayers before him this day. That church leaders may listen to the faithful with attentive hearts, we pray to the Lord. That the faithful may help one another in bearing their burdens, we pray to the Lord. That empty religious practice may give way to service of those in need and authentic relationship with God, we pray to the Lord that our faith may never be an obstacle to peace among the nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord our that the weight of sickness and poverty may be lessened by our service, we pray to the Lord. Lord our that God may lift the, from death those who have fallen asleep, we pray to the Lord. Lord our 
And as we remember Stephen Rochalo Sr. in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Father in heaven, transform our hearts to be like your own sacred heart, the sacred heart of your Son, that is meant to call us out of the coldness of the world into the wonderful light that comes from the furnace of his sacred heart. Transform us, Lord, and help us to follow you. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> the mystery of this water of life will become shared in the body of Christ for us on the shared in the body. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord, and so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. As in joy, full celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this, the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. On your stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. The rich suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing. We pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Before the Mass is ended. Have a great day, everyone.